Welcome to the third Sunday after Epiphany. Here are your announcements. The annual congregational meeting is being held this Sunday at 10 a.m. on Zoom. If you're watching this on Saturday or Sunday, you can still send an email to the church office and request the Zoom link. If You will receive then the link before the meeting begins. The office email is office at adventonline.net. It's not too late to get a copy of the annual report. Paper copies will be available upon request, and a digital copy is always available. Just send an email to the office and, requ and request your copy. The email address is above. There's still a lot of offering envelopes waiting to be picked up. If you have not picked up your envelopes, stop by your the church office during regular business hours and Monday through Friday, 9 to 1, to get your box. If you cannot come during the week, please call Becca at the church office to set up an alternate pickup time. Um, if you're using the online giving option and do not want your envelopes, uh, just contact Becca and let her know and so she can recycle your envelopes. Due to the spike in codeine, uh, COVID um, cases, admission to the office will be limited. Uh, donations can be dropped off in the vestibule and offering envelopes or Redner's receipts can be placed in the secured black mailbox outside the office doors. Properly fitting masks covering the nose and the mouth are mandatory when entering the vestibule. If you or your family are sick, hospitalized, or in need of pastoral care, please contact me through the church office. If you are hospitalized, you can request that the hospital notify us through the nurse. If there has been a death in your family or any other need, please call so that we can give you the support that we desire to do in the midst of those challenges. Now, let's begin worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is Nehemiah chapter 8. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square of the water gate from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. 
And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people to say, and said to all the people, This is a holy day to the Lord our God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Word of God, word of life. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. 
Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged all the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then they began to say to them, he, he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, uh, in the second reading from 1 Corinthians, we hear about Paul's metaphor for the church uh, and the community of the faithful. And the metaphor he uses is the body. Well, it's a metaphor that makes sense, and he does lay it out very really clearly about how all the parts of the body work together for good and, and how... Uh, no one, not one more part is better than another, and uh, we take care of the body. 
But for me, <laughs> I need to tell you, my body isn't taking care of me all the time. Um, and it, it occurs to me when I go to sleep at night, when I rest, lay down to rest, first I have to take my ears out, my hearing aids, and then, now I got to put them back in, and then I take my my glasses off, which are off right now. I don't know where they, <laughs> I don't know where I left them. But anyhow, I have to take my glasses off. And there's a couple other things I do that just, my body isn't working like it used to. And, uh, and occasionally I get a bout of gout in my toe. And Paul says that no one part of the body is more important than the other. Well, I'll tell you, when my toe has gout, that seems to be the most important part of my body. I can't even walk straight. And so it's a funny thing about how our bodies, uh, our bodies, uh, function uh, not as well as they used to. And if I'm speaking to you as a younger person, well, that's fine. Enjoy. It may be different when you grow older. Had an opportunity to hear recently uh, an Episcopalian priest who is older uh, talk about how she is struggling with her body and what's going on. Uh, she, she doesn't like the fact that she's losing track of things. She doesn't like the fact that uh, she's had a couple of near misses in her car and so she's going to have to stop driving. She doesn't like the fact that, well, of course, uh, she is widowed and her husband died over a year ago. And so these things are not what she wanted and not the way she had planned her life. And her body is betraying her at certain points. And then she said, when was it that we ever were told that we can do whatever we want? We can't do what we want. We can't have what we want. We, were, we know that from a child on up. Infants don't get to do what they want. Children, adolescents, young people, not everybody gets to do everything you want. You can't have it the way you want it. And then somehow when people get older, they seem to think, I want this, I want that. I want it another way. Well, no, you've never had things the way you wanted it. And now you may have to be content with who you are, with losing things, and our body not responding in the way that it used to. And as she talked about this, I thought of the quote from Martin Luther, which he wrote in a letter to Justice Jonas. Um, and he wrote these words, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. I love that. I'll say it again. I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. In God's hands. Ah. We are not alone. We aren't struggling through this life, aging as we are, alone. But we can place things into God's hands. God, Emmanuel, Christ Jesus, God with you. So Paul talks about being members of the body, not only with Christ, but with each other. And how the congregation at Corinth, which he writes to, needs to understand that no one member is better than the other and that all need each other to function. And that makes me think of this. Have you read this? This is the annual report from Advent Lutheran Church. This is the story of the body of Christ living together, functioning as many members and functioning as the body of Christ at Telford and Noble. No, 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 no. Not only at Telford and Noble or wherever you are. This is who we are as the body of Christ. No one member is better than the other. 
and each are important. And every member of the body is celebrated when there is a celebration and each one is grieved when there's a sorrow. We are together the body of Christ. This leads me to the gospel lesson. And Jesus, it says in the beginning of that lesson, that he was filled with the power of the Spirit. And when he came to Nazareth, where he was brought up, he reads from the prophet Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recover of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and proclaim the leer of the Lord's favor. So if we follow Paul's lead, and we are the body of Christ, we can substitute the word us for me in this passage. For Christ has proclaimed the year of the Lord's favor. And we need to do that as well. Let me read it like that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to bring good news to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We meet today, Sunday, at 10 a.m. on Zoom. And it is the year of the Lord's favor that we pray for in our meeting. We will be the body of Christ for all whom we meet, individually and collectively. No one member of the body is uh, less important than the other. Everywhere we are, we are the body of Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. And doing ministry is what we're called to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. What is the good news that will be preached? What is the release to the captives? What are people captive to in our lives? It doesn't necessarily mean incarcerated, although it can mean, and we have helped those who are incarcerated. But what has captivated the people around us and us? What does it mean to bring sight to the blind? What are we blind to? What are we not seeing? These are questions we need to ask as a congregation, as individual members of the congregation, as a congregation as a whole. There are plans being made for our congregational meeting and plans that will be made in the meeting. May it be for us a year of the Lord's favor as we call upon the Spirit to be upon us, even as it was upon Christ. And when he sat down, the eyes of all looked upon him with expectation. We would hope, hope, that the expectations were high. But when expectations are high, it doesn't always work that well. As we will find out next week in the Gospel lesson. But for today, call upon the Spirit at Advent Church, you members of the body. Amen. <laughs>
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in reading Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people, God of grace, Hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and everything between. Sustain species that risk extinction. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided, in our society, nation, or world, come quickly you to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict. Dispel violence. Bring an end to war. God of grace, hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty people living with disability, those living with pain and illness, especially those we name before you now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Comfort and sustain all who have been in crisis this week, especially for the residents of Tongo, following the devastating volcanic eruption, and for the members of Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville, Texas, following this last week's hostage crisis. God of grace, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in Advent Church. Bless the varieties of ministries in our congregation as we assemble for our congregational meeting. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who participates in worship and in ministry among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for our bishops, <clears throat> Elizabeth and Christopher, for the congregations of the Westbrook's Mission District, especially for the church council and other leaders of the members of Christ Yoakum's Lutheran Church in Grill. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Vern Bauscher. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be at peace with Christ in this weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>